Good evening, this is uh, your friend uh, Joe Jacon here in uh, the internet, uh, consulting and using the YouTube social media video sharing platform. And I'm going to demonstrate how to improve your English uh, using the method of shadowing. So the first thing that you have to to be sure about is that in your conf in the settings uh, menu of your video favorite video uh, YouTube video you are activating the subtitles. So the subtitles are activated. Sometimes the videos uh, come along with uh, the, with uh, subtitles, and some other times they are generated automatically by the, the by the YouTube system, uh, and sometimes the the uh, the option of generating subtitles comes uh, locked so uh, this kind of videos are not useful for this technique another feature that you can use with this uh, technique in, in the youtube uh, platform is the speed the speed of of uh, of, uh, of video is, uh, can can be graduated accordingly with a normal uh, speed with uh, minus uh, 25 I mean 75 percent of uh, of normal speed 50 percent of normal speed or even 25 percent of normal speed according to your needs and of course you can increase the speed from uh, 25 percent above the normal speed, 50% above the normal speed, 75% above normal, normal speed, and doubling the normal speed of the video. Uh, I am going to make this exercise, which is going to be 13 minutes long, with normal speed of reproduction. So, in a, in this scenario, in this scenario, you can uh, use plenty of uh, settings adjustments uh, in uh, whatever your your uh, computer uh, equipment is i mean maybe you can have you have a uh, headsets you have microphone or uh, you are trying to use your headsets to 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 listen to the to the reproduction or you use it with your with the speakers the 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 speakers of the computer I am going to use the speakers of the computer uh, for the time being and I am going to make it uh, with no other device installed or, or or at my hand. So this is going to be 13 minutes long and stay online. And the, the video is already being recorded by a special software. I'm going to start. Sometimes we miss Sometimes God's provision, we miss because, God's provision because it is disguised as a problem. And we don't and receive, we don't receive the provision because it's wrapped in a, wrapped package, in a package that looks, that looks like, a like a problem. And we keep sending, and we keep sending back, back the gift God is trying to bestow upon, upon us because it doesn't feel good. Sometimes God, will Sometimes God will send correction into your life to make you better. You've been praying to God to make you better, but He didn't. He sends somebody to correct you, but you don't like the way correction feels. So rather than receive the correction, which is a gift to take you where God is calling you to, you get offended and quit. So I am going to explain that in these sort of situations, when you can go uh, alone side by side with the with the voice of the of the video of the original video you just go ahead jump to the to wherever you can uh, continue following the, the the speed of the video so here i am and i will not stop uh even if i am stuck at some particular point of of the of the speech i will continue where i can follow the reading again and God's provision comes, and God's wrapped, provision in comes wrapped in strange so packages. Paul is in prison. in prison, prison, and God provides, God provides for him 
through the church. And he's writing back to them and he said, thank you for the gift. I received it. I was happy about it and I appreciate it. But watch what he says in the next. I'm not saying this because I'm in need. For I have learned this is something you are not born with. You don't know what you need. I mean, you are born, I mean, you are born just screaming. You don't know what you need. You don't know what you need. You just, you just know that you, 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 need, you need to eat. eat. You, don't understand the you don't understand the process, but Lord life is the process, is the process of, God of God teaching, teaching you that he, is, that the he is the one who, who feeds, feeds you. you. Sometimes he'll, Sometimes do, it he'll do it over there. Over there. Sometimes he'll do it over there. He'll do it through nobody at all. Sometimes he'll do it where you're alone. But when it's your stores, you will never lack supply. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For your father knows you need these things. He knows what I need. <clears throat> Paul says, It's nice, but I don't need it. It's nice, but I, don't need it. but I don't need it. I appreciate what you bought for me, Holy said. It's nice, but I don't need it. I like it, but I don't need it. Even let me tell you something right here. I appreciate your passion. I was watching you in worship. But here I am preaching and you are standing up like you are ready to charge the devil with a nerve bow and arrow. And I love it. I love it. I love, your I love your response to the word of God. To the word of God. It's, nice, it's nice, but I want you to know I don't need it. Okay, I'm, a I'm going to preach this. If you stand, if you stand up, up and down, shout me down, I'm, a I'm going if to preach if you sit there and sleep because I can because hold, I it can't hold it in. It's my calling. It's my, it's calling. my, assignment. It's my assignment. If you want, See, if you want, to, respond, want to respond, that's nice. But even, if, even if you don't respond, I have a word from God. And I have to get it out. This is for all of you who have been underappreciated in the position you're in. You have to come to the place where you say, it's nice when people thank me. It's nice when people notice me. But God is my rewarder. God is my source. God is my supply. I don't need it. It's nice to have a date on Valentine's Day, but I don't need it. I take myself for out of pasta. I take myself out of pasta. But I buy my own shrimp. I buy my own shrimp. If God didn't give it, I don't need it. If it's not in my reach, it's not for this season. I found out the deeper the valley, the greener the grass. I found out the deeper the valley, the greener the grass. He will not feed me. He will lead me to a place that he will not feed me. He will never send me into a situation that he does not supply for. Elisha had the unique ability to go into the same situation and see all the shortage and see God's supply. Who is this for today? Who is this for today? Do you know who I am worried about? The one who pretends like they, one who have, pretends no like they have no need, or the one who has become so calloused in, or, or the one who has become so calloused, in, calloused the in, in the heart, the one the who, who has, become has become so dependent, dependent on, dysfunctional on dysfunctional system that cannot feed them in a sustainable way, they have lost their ability to come before God and say, a broken I a broken in a contract, he, he, he will not despise them. The prerequisite for supply is what you know you need. It's that you know you need. I need you, God. I need you. If I see you, I will seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. All these things, these things, they are not needs. All I need is him. 
and he will supply all my needs. All, I've been watching my question a little bit instead of asking the question what I am missing because I can't stay there forever. I am a broken person. There are skills I do not have. There are talents I cannot employ. There are resources I cannot access. And if I focus on that my whole life, it will feed my fur and starve my faith, not receive what Jesus died to give me. For every needy person in the place today, let me give you a better question. Instead of walking into the situation and asking the question, what am I missing? What am I missing? Walk into the same situation and ask the question, what am I missing? What am I missing? What am I missing? What am I what am I not seeing? What am I not seeing? What is it? What is it that God has put in front of me? What are the weapons within my reach that I am not seeing? See. I am not seeing. Pro vision. Pro vision. Isn't this message freedom? You've been so stuck in what was weeping at the feet of Elijah. He's gone now. You have been so stuck in what's not, what you don't have, what you can't do. Sweetheart, if I will have made a list of everything I can't do and everything I'm bad at, there will not be an elevation church. I'm serious. I'm serious. The devil is going to beat me up for preaching to you like this because when there are, like, I this open myself, I sometimes it feels like I'm just opening myself for so much. I wish I could take some time and talk to you about my weaknesses. There are so many weaknesses that I have, but I have never allowed my weaknesses to prevent me from using my weapons. I, when I'm preaching to, I have a bow, I have an arrow, I intend to use every arrow in my quiver. So Peter and John are going to the gate called Beautiful. They're just going to the church one day and along the way to church, destiny will often disguise itself as a distraction. As a distraction. That was too quick. <laughs> that was too quick. They were walking to church. They were walking to church, and there was a beggar in the gate, gate called Beautiful, asking them for alms. He was shaking a cup, in, shaking their a cup in their faces, asking them, asking them for some spare change. But how many know God? How many do God no, does God doesn't always give you the kind of change you ask for? See, God knows the need beneath you, the need beneath the need. Beneath the need, beneath the need, beneath the need. So this man has lame since has been lame since birth. He's never been able to walk. He's doing the best he can. He's in the only place he thinks he can get any kind of provision or assistance at all. And here come Peter and John. And apparently, they look like the kinds of people who will, who will be willing to give help a little bit. So he asks them boldly. In fact, the Bible says in verse 3 that he saw Peter and John going up to the temple. Now, if he hadn't been in the right place, he wouldn't have seen his provision. That's why I have to come to the church. I don't get in the right place. I might miss the provision. I might miss the word God wants me to give me to fight the battle I don't even know about. Yet, so I have to get there. And as he's sitting there, and as he's sitting there, he sees Peter and John. Verse three, he sees Peter and John. He sees Peter and John. He sees provision. He sees provision. Vision. I'm gonna stay right here. I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to say provision and the wipers. Wipers are the dolphins, and the dirt is the shark. What do you mean, boy? It's a dirty windshield. No, I see something in it. I see something in it. I see something. Maybe that's what he said. We need to have faith like a child and stop being so blind. Being so blind. 
blind to our supply. If the enemy can keep you from seeing the need, then he will keep you blind to the supply. And when he saw Peter, come, oh, he, he stopped said, Peter. He stayed up. hook a brother up. And Peter said, "I got good news." They say, "I got good news and bad news." The the the, the good news is the good news. I see I, I see you. Look at, Look at it. it. It says that it says not only did, the, not only did John, the man see Peter and John, but Peter looked straight at him. I wonder how many. I wonder how many people had passed by him. I wonder how many people had stepped over. I wonder him. how many I'm people had stepped by him. I'm not saying that you make your feel bad. We all get in a hurry and we're never going to be able to do everything. That's not my point. My point is that this particular passage, miracle was sitting there in the form something everyone else walked past. And Peter looked at him and he was there. I don't, think Peter was I don't think Peter was the first one to the church, nor was he the last one. But he looked at him and saw something. He saw an opportunity disguised as a problem. God is an optometrist. He wants to fix the way you see. You've been asking, will I have it what it takes? And God is asking, will you take what you have? Get a bow. Get some arrows. Arrows. It's right there. It's right there. It's right there. It's right there. I mean, God will hide. Your I mean, God will hide your provision in plain sight. To cause, to cause you to seek for Him. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Thank you for my watching. So Make sure you you subscribe so you don't miss you don't miss any of this mess. I just live, 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 live. Okay, friends, <clears throat> this is a shadowing exercise with my guest, uh, Pastor Stephen Fertig. I am just uh, having uh, a good time at learning and practicing my English and performing uh, a little better each time I can I can do this kind of exercises. I am learning new languages, new new words, and new ways to to express these words to 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 join, to, make, to put these words together in order to give uh, the proper message. I'm learning about emotions and ways of, to express and body, body language situations. So, all rights reserved to uh, Pastor Stephen Fortick, and this is a, a, a disclaimer. This is educational material for everyone who wants to be instructed in these in this, uh, techniques of learning. And of course, it's it is absolutely free. I I cannot I cannot earn money from the work that somebody else has done before previously, and I'm just utilizing this for uh, educational uh, purposes. Thank you very much, and uh, we will see later in time. Thank you.